Hello everyone and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is integrating inventory visibility service with third party applications. My name is Tim and I will be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live events and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you are agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within the coming weeks. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the session and then a live Q&A after the presentation. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Jiao Cheng Xia, software engineer, Yufi Huang, senior product manager, and Hiran Naik, senior solutions architect. Jiao Cheng, over to you to get us started. Thank you, team, for the introduction, and hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, tech talk session for inventory visibility service. Our topic today is integrating inventory visibility service with third party applications. Joining me will be uh, Yufei and Hiren from Microsoft. In our previous tech talk session, we have covered two topics. Firstly, how inventory visibility service serves as the solution to manage business inventory on hand data. And on top of that, using Dynamic 365 supply chain management as an example on process to transfer data from ERP system to microservice. Often, the inventory data lies in multiple systems or sources, and inventory visibility service solves this problem by providing a single source of truth concatenating the data from different sources. Our following Tech Talk sessions will show this process step by step. This will be covered up in two sessions. Today, we will show the process to configure, update, and query inventory visibility service to handle changes from multiple systems. As for the case for concurrent changes from multiple systems, we will leave it to our next session when we cover more advanced features such as soft reservation and allocation. The agenda today consists of following parts. We start by introducing how to configure inventory visibility service for a third party system after a general introduction on the scenarios. And under this configuration to make the on hand changes and queries for inventory data within two systems. Then we introduce the techniques to manage data across different systems by the concept of calculated measure. Followed by that, we have an end-to-end -end demo as well as the Q&A session. To begin with, we will be introducing the scenario to operate the franchise stores with inventory visibility. And my colleague Yufei will be covering this part. Yufei, over to you. Thanks, Jiachen. Um, let's do some case study together on how a franchise coffee store can operate with inventory visibility to update inventory counting and near real time stock deduction upon the sold quantities. And this is a simplified scenario. And we have Dynamics SCM as ERP system and also um, a external uh, an, as the ERP system and also the final system record for the transactions. We also have an external system, for example, the point of sale system, and then you can see inventory visibility microservice in between. And the store sells sandwiches, for example, and the original stock for the sandwiches are 100. And this is synchronized into inventory visibility during the default integration. And from the external system, if a customer placed an order by the app and pick up in store, an inventory availability query can be made into IV on the order placement screen. 
Once availability confirmed and order placed to the point of sale system, for example, a sales order of 10 sandwiches, the store then posts the deduction to IV either instantly or periodically. And what our customer also does is that they want to track not only the consumption of finished products, but also the exploded bomb, such as, for example, milk and sugar consumption per beverage sold. And therefore, their inventory adjustment requests will first hit a customized middle tier, which will do bomb explosion and then the consumption of finished products together with individual materials are posted into IV. And with this step, you can already obtain and rely on IV to support their business operations. And of course, that this customer, and typically for most of our customers, they're not in a rush to update their ERP stock levels because they already get that, you know, the, the near real time inventory update in IV already. In that case, they can actually synchronize the orders or inventory um, changes, either aggregated or in bulk later to the ERP system, let's say to Dynamics SCM, for further order process and physical inventory update in the Dynamics 365 SCM. And the update, and together with other inventory changes in Dynamics 365 SCM, such as new goods receipt quantities, were also synchronized back into IV. Uh, IV means inventory visibility. And there is a way that IV can make sure the ERP IV sync does not double deduct the same inventory twice while the offset. And this solution is currently customized, but we're working to offer as out of box product release available publicly. And another use case for inventory adjustment is inventory counting. You can directly post your inventory counting results to inventory visibility and offset later when you post the, the inventory counting journal in Dynamics 365 SCM. And lastly, you can always query inventory visibility from your other data sources if needed. And um, I just want to mention here that we have another feature called soft reservation, and the use case is very similar to inventory adjustment. It's just there are two different APIs, and we will introduce soft reservation in the up upcoming session. And if you're very strict about avoiding oversell and does not allow a, a single negative inventory, then the main um, that the, the, the feature that might be applicable to you is the soft reservation, but still you can use inventory adjustment to handle most of your uh, inventory de deduction or normal reservation cases. And the main difference is that the inventory adjustment does not check if your stock is negative, while soft reservation is very strict about it. Um, however, the inventory adjustment API's performance is better than soft reservation. So basically, there's a balance you need to make between um, uh, to, to, to consider when you're making decisions about what set of products, for example, the important or best sellers or limit, limit edition products that you, you can apply to use the soft reservation API, while for the normal products and the common products, you could use the inventory adjustment API to do the job. Okay, and then uh, moving to the next slide, we could, um, we can see that um, I want to introduce a few potential challenges that um, let's say if you're using inventory visibility and you're operating across multiple systems, uh, let's see what are the potential challenges you could face if you're not connecting your third party systems with inventory visibility. And taking a fictional company, Contoso Entertainment System USA, as an example. So from our last session, uh, you, we've already introduced that how to connect inventory visibility service with Dynamics 365 SCM's data. Um, but since Contoso um, operates across other systems, for example, point of sale systems, um, and point of sales is not connected yet. And then, um, Contoso has Contoso's retail stores got the POS system from their third party vendor, but currently it's loosely coupled with Dynamics 365 SCM and the transactions are not updated in Dynamics 
365 SCM in time. And when the stores do inventory counting, the new inventory quantities are not yet reflected instantly in Dynamics 365 SCM, nor in Inventory Visibility Service yet. And Contoso expands fast, and it takes lots of effort for them to harmonize new stores data to Dynamics 365 SCM, and the inventory query response from Dynamics 365 SCM takes quite a long time. And lastly, Contoso also operates across other channels, for example, online, and they also accept orders from the mobile app. And they do not have visibility into the actual stock levels through those channels either. And let's see how uh, how you can do to um, how to you can set up those connections to the third parties um, systems by from Jason's introduction next. Hey, thanks, Yufei. Uh, now let's follow Yufei's introduction on the first part of how we configure inventory visibility service to handle all the challenges uh, from the previous page. For the rest of today's session, we would go step by step on the process of setting up inventory visibility service to integrate your inventory management solution with a third party system other than Dynamics. 365 supply chain management. We begin with a step where inventory visibility is already integrated with uh, Dynamic 365 supply chain management. And for related contents, please refer to our previous Tech Talk sessions for details. And our starting point is inventory visibility service has nothing more than being connected to Dynamics. And we start from a totally blank configuration and demonstrate a step-by-step -step process to set up inventory visibility service to make the business flow run and meet with the needs. Let's first illustrate what a typical day is like for a retail user of inventory visibility service in the Contoso Entertainment System company. The solution will consist of three parts, Dynamic 365 Supply Chain Management as the backend ERP system, inventory visibility service itself and third party POS system. In the beginning of the day, Dynamic 365 supply chain management synchronized the data of on hand to inventory visibility service. During the normal business hours, the POS system would have a lot of order to process. As syncing every order back to Dynamic 365 is very heavy workload to a typical ERP system, we decide to sync such data to inventory visibility service directly. This makes the inventory visibility service as the single source of truth during the business hours. There are advantages for this approach. Firstly, we leverage the performance of inventory visibility service as well as the potential extension possibilities provided by the power platform. And secondly, during the business hours, inventory managers, even without access to Dynamic 365 or POS system, can make queries to inventory visibility service with API calls. And to save the load of the backend ERP system, we can sync the data in batches back to Dynamics 365 or by the end of day, we only think of it once. This solution is feasible and extendable even with more system incurred by putting inventory visibility service in the center as the single source of truth. Let us further illustrate the typical day for, for the retail user by a table that shows all the data process. In the beginning of the day, Dynamic 365 uh, synchronized the data to inventory visibility service with an uh, available physical quantity of 100. At this point, there is no quantities being sold from the POS system. Therefore, the POS system should have 100 available uh, remain to, uh, to be sold. In the morning at say 10 a.m., the POS system may 10 orders that sold 20 pieces in total. 
What it is required to do is nothing more than telling inventory visibility service that the POS system has sold 20 pieces. An inventory visibility service would calculate that there are 80 pieces available to be sold. Similar story happens where in the afternoon, the store sold five more pieces and there are 75 pieces remaining. In the evening, after they close the store, the POS system does two things. Firstly, it syncs the data back to uh, Dynamic 365 Supply Chain Management so that it knows that there will only be 75 available physical by updating the order status correspondingly. And secondly, the POS system is in charge of resetting the data from the POS sold quantity in inventory visibility service so that inventory visibility service would know there is 75 uh, remaining to be sold. And in the beginning of the second day, dynamic operators decide it is going to make a replenish and replenishment of 25 pieces. So it begins with the 100 pieces again, as it did yesterday. To achieve the process that is described above, we need to go through the inventory visibility service configurations. Firstly, to indicate that the data comes from a different source, we have the concept of data source and name it as POS for the point of sale system. The data source contains a name as well as two important informations. Firstly, is the physical measure which is an input quantity field, for example, the sold quantity. And secondly, is the dimension mapping. In case that the input data contains a different dimension name that is, uh, with the base dimensions provided by inventory visibility service, we need to set up a mapping that maps the different input dimension to the same base dimension so that we know that two data sources are modifying the same record. After we have configured a data source, it is optional to set up an index hierarchy for performance optimizations. An index hierarchy tells inventory visibility service to store the data in a performance optimized way. For example, if all the items in the Contoso entertainment system contains the size dimensions, you may want to add size to the hierarchy to enhance the query performance grouping by size. And lastly, we want to set up what we call a calculated measure defining the arithmetic results into one value. For example, we want to store a value called pos.available, which indicates the difference between the available physical transferred from dynamic 365 supply chain management from the beginning of day and the total quantities being sold during the business hours. Upon the installation of inventory visibility service from Dynamic 365 Supply Chain Management, the, this screenshot shows a default configuration of several data sources. The goal for such data sources is to provide an example and example scenario that you, users can play with. But if such examples are not needed, it is suggested to click on the delete all configurations button on the top right to remove everything, every configuration except for the built-in configuration for FNO, indicating the dynamic 365 supply chain management. Note that the delete all configuration process is not reversible. So when you delete it, there is no option to revert the deleted configurations back. And this is what it looks like after we delete the configurations. So that there will be only one data source F and O remaining. And this is the starting point for us uh, where we configure the uh, inventory visibility service to accept the new data that comes from the POS system. Please note that for every change we're making to inventory visibility service power app solution, 
the store the results are temporarily stored in the dataverse tables but not synchronized to inventory visibilities in memory cache we need to click the update configuration to validate and active the changes to inventory visibility service here's a demo of configuring the new data source named post we see the example data source of FNO firstly contains the dimension mapping, removing the prefix from dynamic frequency types built in solution. And we have the physical measures. Looks very like the column names from the inventory on hand list. Now we'd go ahead to add a new data source. Firstly, we define a data source name. We we'll make a abbreviated name called POS and we save the name. As the dimension mappings are optional, we'll skip the setting and go ahead to set the physical measures. We're adding a new physical measure called sold. And this is about the process to uh, add the new dimension, uh, add the new data source called POS. And we, are up, we can have an optional step to set up the index hierarchy to optimize our query performance. The built-in index hierarchy will contain site ID and location ID, which is compulsory for every query. And we can add a new index set to define multiple sets of index hierarchies to optimize the query performance. In our example, our items are all containing the dimension size, so we are putting dimension size ID into the configuration. And after we are done, we need to click the update configuration to validate and active the changes, activate the changes. At this point, we are updating the uh, POS quantities with new configuration. We can use what we call an on-hand change event. We want to sell one piece of even the item IVS001 on the post machine. The integration on the post machine is nothing more than calling what we call the on-hand change API showing on the right side of the page. The API is called an inventory visibility service, logs the change and updates the quantities correspondingly. So here's the request body for uh, the on-hand change event. Firstly, it needs to contain an ID which marks the uniqueness of each request. And it contains the organization ID uh, corresponding to the data area ID in dynamic 365 supply chain management and the product ID attribute for the item ID. For the quantities, it is a nested JSON format, which contains the firstly by the data source and then by physical measures. In this example, we're only changing the sold physical measure and the data source pose. So we need to specify nothing more than these two pieces. And lastly, we need to include dimensions so that inventory visibility service know that it is updating the quantities on specified site location with given sites. And after we made the update, we can use the same query for the last time to see what is the difference for the new data source. We call the API to inventory visibility service of the index query to uh, query the on hand for item IVS001. As you can see on the right side, the results looks similar to what we have last time, but contains a new entry that is highlighted. The highlighted entry is the results from the data source POS, and it has a sold quantity of 20 pieces in total. 
With such information, we have a sample web page uh, that can be done by retrieving the JSON format response and render the front end forms. And it will present that IVS0019 has 100 physical available from FNO, subjects uh, 20 pieces that is already sold from the post system side. At this point, we come with a problem that there could be multiple physical measures uh, stored in a system. For example, we may have a few different data sources and each data source contains tens of different physical measures. It can be a nightmare to analyze the physical measures. And it's better to have some method that can do simple analytics based on the based on the physical measure values retrieved. And now we are introducing the concept of calculated measures, which is designed to manage data across different data sources and store the relationships results into uh, one single value. A calculated measure defines the arithmetic logics between uh, different physical measures. For example, we can define a new calculated measure called uh, pos.available, which equals to uh, available physical from FNO subjects that pos sold. Please note that currently uh, we only allow to define uh, arithmetic operations of plus and minus, and we need to define the relationships based on existing physical measures. We do have a backlog item to support more complex definitions by putting a calculated measure into the definition itself so that you can define a calculated measure based on another calculated measure. And we expect to roll out this feature soon. So now we go through the process to define the calculated measure under the POS data source called post.available equals to FNO available physical subtracts POS sold. As we can see, we stop at where we have uh, in the previous demo and we have no calculated measures currently defined. We can add a new calculated measure. To do so, we firstly need to specify which data source do we want to put this uh, calculated measure and then define a new name for it. After that, we select the modifier, whether it's an addition or subtraction operation and specify the data source and a physical measure under the data source correspondingly. We click save the measure and the add button to add a new modifier and calculated measure uh, below the existing definitions. And at this point, we're defining the calculated measure of post.available as we expected. And we again need to update configuration to validate and activate the changes. Let's see what's the difference after we define the calculated measure. We will make another query. So we will call the on-hand index query API for inventory visibility service as we did a few minutes ago. And for the same site location and the sizes. This is what the response body looks like. Apart from all the existing values that we showed a few slides ago, we have a new entry under the POS system. As you can see, the available value would equal to the available physical subtracts POS sold. From the response body itself, we do not know whether the value return is a physical measure or a calculated measure as the values are put together. One thing to notice is that the calculated measures are not stored in the in-memory cache, but calculated ad hoc on an ad hoc basis at every query. We do this to save the memory consumption from inventory visibility service.
And at this point, we can add a new column of calculated measure to the sample page. As we see on the right side, we have a new column called pos.available that equals to the uh, to the difference between the left two columns. This would make the uh, sample page more intuitive and users can capture the key information uh, within the first glance. And now we would have an end-to-end -end demo for the typical process of data sync after we set up all the new configurations. We'll again use the example that we showed in the beginning of the Tech Talk session. We'll stop at the, we would show the difference between we switch the, from the second step to the third step, where we already have 20 pieces sold and we sell five more pieces. We make an API call to sell, to sell five more pieces to have 75 remaining uh, available in the post system. And the following video would demonstrate the process. Firstly, we make an index query specifying site one, location 11, and the size large. Uh, we group the queries by size ID. We would uh, send the request and to find out that there are actually 20 pieces already sold and 80 pieces available. At this point, we use the onhand change event API call to sell five more pieces by a different uh, request ID. Upon receiving the response, find the processing status success. It means that our onhand change event is executed successfully and even visibility service should have contained the changes that we already made. We're going back to the index query tab and make exactly the same query again to see the difference. As you can see, we have five more pieces sold. Without explicitly stating we are changing the available quantity, the available quantity is automatically recalculated and presented correctly. And at this point, you can update the uh, sample web page to present the new, the latest POS available. This is the ideal solution for a inventory manager or business operator to uh, operate on a front end user interface by making real time queries to inventory visibility service to check the uh, up to date inventory quantities. So to wrap up, uh, we now have Contoso Entertainment System USA that connects both Dynamic 365 and POS system with inventory visibility service. And the, the daily business operation can rely on inventory visibility service as the single source of truth for accurate and near real time inventory check. The third party system, uh, POS system, will post the inventory consumption uh, to inventory visibility directly instead of thinking everything back to the backend ERP system. The third party POS system will only need to synchronize the aggregate inventory changes to uh, dynamic 365 supply chain management a few times a day, which will uh, reconcile inventory visibility for any difference that could possibly incur. And the store countings are also updated to inventory visibility instantly, while the counting journals are posted uh, dynamic 365 uh, supply chain management later. If you recall our previous tech talk contents, uh, this is exactly what the built-in batch job integration does. And the new stores and apps can be easily connected to inventory visibility for near real-time inventory query. 
meeting the needs for a fasting uh, for a fast growing business. For more resources, please refer to our official Microsoft documentations, our previous uh, tech talk sessions, recording and slides. You're also welcome to join the Yammer group to post any questions and discussion you may have or post your ideas directly on the ideas site. So that's the, uh, that's the content for our today's tech talk session. Uh, we will go to the Q&A part. Thank you, Jai Cheng. I think we have received a, a few questions and we have already answered them. Uh, but one of the questions I think we would like to clarify is uh, the third party applications like other ERPs or other POS systems. Uh, is there an, any inbuilt integration with, uh, with inventory visibility service? Uh, so Jai Cheng, if you want to take that question. Uh, OK, so for a third party system, um, to the best of our knowledge, you need to do the uh, integration. On your own by default, I think the best we can have is if you are operating on um, intelligent other management uh, stories would be a, diff a bit different. So we have a connection for um, intelligent other management, but for the other uh, for the other systems, there's none such integration uh, as far as I know. Maybe you fail, would you uh, comment more on this question on this part? Sorry, I was trying to answer the other questions. Do, do, do you mind to, to repeat what was the question? Yeah, I think yeah, so, Yufei, so, so question is, uh, is there any inbuilt integration with any other third party application or POS systems other than Dynamics 365 SCM? And the okay. answer is, yeah, I think I'll just uh, repeat what Chai Cheng was saying that we only have built in integration with Dynamics 365 SCM. We do have a connector for intelligent order management, uh, so we can you can utilize that. But if you have any other systems like POS or WMS systems which you would like to or other legacy ERP systems which you would like to integrate with inventory visibility service. Inventory visibility service provide a framework. It exposes the API. However, you still have to build integrations on your respective systems to authenticate against inventory visibility service and call the respective API to post the quantity to uh, uh, query on hand quantity from inventory visibility service. That's exactly how it should work. Thanks, Hiran. OK. I think the latest question we have received is Dynamics 365 Commerce. Is that a third party application as well? If you want to answer that. Um, so Dynamics 365 Commerce, um, that, that, that's a good question. So we are actually I mean, this is not a public announcement, but basically we've already started the collaboration with the Dynamics Commerce team um, to, to, to do investigations and evaluations on the integration between commerce scale unit with inventory visibility. So stay tuned um, once we have confirmed that as a roadmap item, then there will be announcement on the what's new um, publicly. But currently it's still um, actually it's still um, under investigation and, and evaluation phase, so not publicly announced yet. However, you see the back end uh, D365 Commerce is same as D365 SCM, so we do have built in integration between IV and D365 Commerce back office. OK, so. Is there a way to add other fields for the IV response, for example, field from invent batch? Yes, it is possible. So uh, basically within inventory visibility, we have 
for the data source dynamics um, 3 c 5 SCM, we have already set up some default um, mappings for, for both dimensions and physical measures. However, we also reserved um, several customized fields for additional, for example, dimensions. That means if you have additional um, customized dimensions in, in Dynamics SCM and you want to also synchronize that into IV or do the mapping to IV, then you could leverage those additional fields. Yeah, I think I'll just a little bit elaborate on that one. Uh, as Jai Cheng showed, uh, as you add new data source, as you configure new data source, uh, in your uh, third party application, if you have different kind of dimensions, uh, terminology could be different, uh, but you can map those dimensions with the base dimensions which we have available in inventory visibility service. Uh, so you can map it and then when you uh, adjust any quantity from third party application into inventory visibility. You can basically use those dimensions so that the the inventory on hand will be tracked against those dimensions. And at the same time, when you query on hand, you can use the same dimensions to retrieve the on hand quantity. You feel there is another question is in future, will you be considering to provide connector for Dynamics POS? Is this Dynamics POS part of the Dynamics Commerce? Yes, correct. Um, so as as I mentioned previously, so for Commerce and IV integration, our current plan is that um, the integration will be between IV and Commerce CSU. So um, there won't be direct integration between IV and Commerce POS, but as that POS will be integrated with Karma's CSU as part of Karma's solution. So that's how the integration flow will be. So the integration will, um, will be through the Karma's CSU. Okay. And I think uh, there is a follow up question to that. Can we please see your roadmap for Dynamics POS changes? So I think. Uh, um, it yeah, it's it's not it's not an official roadmap yet. Yeah, yeah. Another question we have got is how to customize inventory visibility to add some computations like nearest store location, etc. Not sure if we have understood the question. Uh, I think uh, nearest store maybe you mean by some inventory dimension like location where you can uh, basically capture your inventory against? Um, I think this is uh, for this question. It looks like a solution where you query the uh, you query the inventory visibility service firstly, and upon the um, result you get some insufficient quantities you would want to make a replenishment from the nearest store so the process to carry the nearest store would be a separate um, solution that mm. you can build directly on power apps perhaps by dual writing your uh, location data from dynamic 365 supply chain management uh, and make the geo related calculations so that's the uh, way a way I can think of. Yeah, I inventory visibility service currently does not have any feature where it compute uh, what will be the nearest store location or anything like that and kind of show you the available on hand or anything like that. There is another question which says will best practices be documented by Microsoft on how to extend the inventory visibility sync service with custom dimension values? Uh, I think we. We would consider to a. To write about such best practices or examples on how to write the extensions um, by a technical blog or 
equivalent. Uh, because as far as I know, the suggestions for extensions would be covered by such block instead of putting in the documentations, uh, as well as the known uh, limitations for certain extension methods we know. We do hear about uh, more, um, we do hear about some asks for various kind of uh, extension asks. Uh, before we have such blogs or writings uh, ready, uh, please feel free to drop us email directly to inventory visibility support uh, team as sh shown on the uh, current page. There is another question around Power Apps front end application consuming or receiving stock and getting synced up with D365 SCM as backend inventory and financial accounting application. Does that support it with IV? Sorry, I actually didn't quite get that question. So um, I don't know if yeah. Hiran, you, you maybe we need some more elaboration on that. Yeah, I think uh, it's not very clear what exactly the ask or requirement is here. Maybe you can send an email to uh, inventory visibility support at microsoft.com to kind of uh, give your specific requirement and scenario and maybe we can respond. Could you share a link with the documentation of this content? Yes, definitely. Uh, we will publish this recording and we will also uh, publish the PowerPoint presentation along with that. Uh, so you should have that in coming weeks. OK, I think we have covered almost all the questions. Uh, there, some of the questions. Another one. That is, how will the POS data source be updated when the FNO data source um, is to avoid cells being subject, uh, subtracted twice. So uh, I will explain this um, uh, br br briefly. So um, when the POS data, or say whatever, you, uh, you, um, basically when the POS transactions um, being synchronized into FNO, for example, either because either by syncing the orders or by either you can make directly creating entry uh, adjustment journals as well. So uh, for either way, there will be FNO um, physical inventory stock levels being deducted, of course. And then there's this offset process Currently, this offset is still customized for inventory adjustment. That when doing this offset, you would specify that um, first of all, the FNL, um, FNL inventory levels will be updated, synchronized into IV to deduct the FNL physical available. And secondly, at the same time, the similar quantity would need to be um, reverted of the for the previous posted or recorded POS data. That means in Jiachen's example, the POS sold will be reverted back to zero, for example, while the f and available to physical will also be deducted. And then the overall balance of, um, for example, POS available will still be, um, will still remain the same across the entire process. And um, inventory visibility service will be recognizing that um, the the quantities being deducted in F and O, for example, with the same uh, product ID, same dimensions, we will be able to recognize that um, to 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 know which products and for which dimensions that the quantities needs to be offset. Thank you, Yufe. I think we have received a couple of more questions. Uh, first question is, in your example, only POS was point of consumption application. Can it work if you have more than one point of consumption application? For example, selling through retail stores, selling directly through factory warehouse, not using POS, but uh, Dynamics 365 SCM. 
Um, firstly, for our uh, suggested configuration, uh, new uh, changes from different system would be configured under different data sources. So they would uh, be changing the same record if they match, if the inventory dimension of the requested changes match. And the change, the concurrent changes may incur the concepts uh, that's related to sub-preservation, um, which we'll be introducing um, during the next session for time constraints. So just stay tuned to our latest um, inventory uh, visibility tech talk series announcements, or you can send us emails for more details regarding this question. Thanks, Chai Chang. I think we have one more question. Is it possible to use inventory visibility add-in if a third party WMS system has inventory data and synchronizes that with Dynamics 365 SCM in real time? Yufei, you want to take that? Yeah, um, so that, that depends on how you would like to integrate your third party systems with Dynamics SCM. So for example, if your third party uh, WMS is integrated directly with SCM, meaning all your inbound and outbound WMS um, transactions, and inventory changes are updated or synchronized into SCM already. And then with that Dynamics SCM to IV batch job sync, then of course your third party WMS um, system update will also be synchronized into inventory visibility through that SCM to IV sync. Um, so that's one approach. Another approach is that if you want to connect your third party WMS directly into IV, um, for, for example, like whenever you, you have a, a um, inbound or outbound change within your WMS system, of course you could connect that with IV and post it into IV to obtain that really super real-time update and reflection of your uh, WMS data. And Eventually, I think you still need to connect your third party WMS to SCM and to make the changes um, because SCM currently does the inventory management and is the final system of all your transaction records as well. And of course, an offset process needs to be uh, set up between SCM into IV to offset whatever daily transactions you've already posted into IV through your third party WMS system. Thank I you. Hope that answers the question. Yeah. I think we have received one more. Uh, so, for out of the box connector for Dynamics 365 POS, any estimate of when we can expect it? Depending on this, we can plan on customizing POS if it's too far away. I, th I think the question is again asking for the POS for Dynamics. Yeah, um, I guess I guess we can discuss internally and uh, once we have some um, informal um, roadmap, discussion. then I think we yeah. can share. Yeah, I think we don't have a roadmap uh, planned for for commerce and POS at this moment. So I think as we have more information, we formed up our roadmap. We will definitely share it with you, but it doesn't look like in in near future. So if you have an immediate need, I think the best way to go is to customize it. OK, we have got another one which says, are there licensing requirement for third parties connecting to Dynamics 365 SCM through IV? You feel you want to take that licensing requirements? Yeah, so for this question, uh, I so I would make some assumption of this question. So first of all, inventory visibility service at the moment, we do not write data back into Dynamics SCM, um, but instead we would take the data from SCM. If there are updates from SCM, for example, that would be update back into inventory visibility through that batch drop sync. Um, and I would assume this question is about um, 
whether there is a license required if we are connecting third party systems to inventory visibility service. Um, there won't be additional license required um, as long as first of all for inventory visibility service itself, as long as you get dynamic SCM license, it is included in that already. And secondly, if you're using it, using inventory visibility to, to connect with your other third party systems and making API calls, then we are that API calls, um, especially when you're trying to post data, so write data into inventory visibility service, we will also create, write that record into the Dataverse um, as well. And then that is subject to the Dataverse um api limit um and by default you will have i think it's forty thousand daily api limit um for for your standard scm license however there's additional license available as well if that's not enough yeah i think uh, our guidance is that you test your volume and load uh, in test or uat uh, to see if you are going to exceed that API protection limit from the Dataverse side and whether you need to buy any additional add-in to kind of fill that quota. Uh, but as you mentioned, uh, we do have default API limits and a inventory visibility service itself does not have SKU. You have to just purchase the Dynamics 365 SCM license to get up and running. OK. I I think uh, we have covered all of the questions. Anything else, Yufi or Chai Cheng, you want to cover? No, okay. not from me. Yet. Sounds good. I'll hand it back to team for the closing comments. Thank you, Hira. I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We'd love to hear your feedback on today's session and hear what you'd like to see in future events. Thank you for your participation. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within the coming weeks. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and to you, our audience, for joining us today. We hope you have a great rest of the day ahead.